Hello everyone and welcome to Fuse Room Recording Studio in Berlin. My name is Alberto and in this video we're going to talk about Sugar, a new plugin that just came out released by Process Audio Plugins and PureMix.net. Now for those of you who don't know, PureMix is an audio tutorials website. It's been out forever and I've been part of their family for I don't know how many years. So when they told me this plugin was in closed beta and I was going to you know, be called upon testing it for beta testing, I was super, super happy. Now it's been released and I thought it would be great to just go through the features that make this plugin really, really unique. It's a harmonic multiband exciter and you'll see there's some things that it can do that you can't quite find in other products. All right, so let's dive in. So here's the user interface that Sugar has. Pretty sexy if you ask me. From top to bottom, you have the logo, you have the presets pane where you can load and save your presets, you have a global bypass button, and then you have the settings pane. In here, you can resize the UI, aka user interface, which is pretty common and pretty cool in new plugins for those of you who are losing eyesight, like I am. And then there's a show and hide spectrum analyzer, and you can pick whether you want slower, fast speed, higher low resolution, and economic, medium, or screen refresh rates. It can get pretty high quality and pretty intense, but it's really cool how the thing moves. You'll see in a second. Then you can pick whether or not you want the opacity to be normal or transparent for the dry signal. And then most important thing, you have a linear phase mode. So you can pick whether you want this to work in linear phase or not. Then you can show or hide the tooltips and you have an about pane. Then right below you have the main frequency area of sugar. You have four frequency areas, low, medium, high and air with a quantity slider from zero to 100 and you have two colors and you can pick one color and one color only for each band. So the programmers give you thick or punch for low, warm or broad for medium, shine or excite for high and yin and yang for air. So obviously they are from low to high frequencies and the crossover points are fixed. The developers thought it would be great to have direct, straightforward approach to this sort of harmonic excitement and they optimize these various colors, punch, broad, shine, yin, yang, you name it, to work in those specific areas. So you do not need to worry about moving crossovers around. It will sort of work adaptively to your material. You can bypass every band, each and every band, you can bypass more than one if you want. And then right below you have more common things that you can see in other plugins. You have an input and output gain sliders. You can make this guy work with stereo or mid side modes. And when you engage mid side mode, you will see that the sliders, you know, duplicate for each band. So you have a mid quantity and a side quantity for each band. So for example, in the air, I can pick, you know, some kind of mid side relationship. And in the high frequencies, I can change that. And I have total control over mid and side for all the bands. Then you can pick whether or not you want this plugin to output FX only, which is really useful for bussing or parallel processing. And then you have a level management button. This button we stayed a lot in beta to make sure then when it's engaged and you're tweaking these bands, the gain staging keeps, you know, the volume, the output volume constant. This way you can really assess if your, you know, processing is doing something that you want or not to the signal. And it's also preventing from uh, overloading the plugin. So sometimes, you know, it might happen that you, you want to go extremely high in, in the quantity of your low processing and this would make everything you just explode. With level management, you can prevent that because the more you engage, you know, gain processing, the more the output gain will go down. So going below here, you have filters, high pass and low pass, which you can turn on and off with different frequency settings. And you can also engage whether or not you want these filters to be steep. Then you have saturation and you can pick between three algorithms and naturally off as well. So you have drive, distort and crush. And these, you know, you can pick one setting, they have different colors and then you can tweak the quantity of the saturation. And this is just it. The only thing that I'm missing is that the center part is a very cool global wet inject, you know, pretty cool name. Uh, the wet inject basically does this, it just, 
increases everything by, you know, a constant amount. So the relationship stays the same. So if you have a ratio between different bands, this will, you know, be preserved. But it's a cool way to see if something you're doing could be, you know, a little more taken to the extreme or a little more tamed in some way. So here we have a snippet from a song from the second EP of 7.20 AM in which I played all of these keyboards and synthesizer sounds that you're gonna hear, which are pretty, pretty cool. The song is called Sweetie, and this is gonna be in this second EP, which is probably gonna come out soon, maybe next month, we don't know. So I've just taken some stems out of it, and they're missing the mix bus, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use sugar on every single channel, and the game is we can't use anything else but sugar to make this sound supposedly better. So I have three different synth basses, I have then a distorted bass, I have kick and snare, I have extra drums, I have synth fast, synth slow, and then lead vocals. All of these sugars are off, or we're gonna also bypass them, but they weren't doing anything to the sound. We're gonna listen to this snippet, and it's the end of the first chorus, if I remember correctly, going into a sort of like middle eight, and then going to the final chorus. I'm still dry, not satisfied, searching like a spy. So we have three basses, as I said, a distorted bass, couple drum tracks, and then two synth tracks that obviously in the original session everything is split. I just made sure I had nine stems, it's eight instrumental plus one lead vocals, and I gathered these tracks in terms of, you know, common sort of palette. There's a synth fast and there's a synth slow, for example, let's hear why fast and slow. This is the fast. And this is the slow. Then we have kick and snare. Already printed with effects as well. These are all drum machines that we plugged in. Moog synthesizers, Nord Lead. Uh, there's a DW8000. There's... Um, I forgot how many, there's a Poly 6, there's a Monopoly, there's lots of vintage synthesizers. And the bass, for example, is made of three basses, which I kept split. This is how the original session is. So we have a bass one, bass two, and bass three. 
Then there's a distorted bass, which isn't distorted, I would say, but it's really pitchy and detuned. Then there's extra drums, and then the lead vocals, which you heard. The sound of my town, happy and sweet. Okay, so the first thing I would do is run bass 1 against bass 3, because I have to decide where I want the low frequencies to leave. And I think I know, even if they're sort of not playing always together, that in the chorus, I want to hear bass 1. Which does have bass frequencies. And bass 3. There's some sub here as well, maybe not as, you know, blatant as bass 1 has, but there's some sub. So I don't want to cut both, I just want to make them, you know, live together. Bass 2 is not that bass heavy, actually. Could have been a synth line, but we kept it in the basses. So let's keep an eye on bass 1 and try and see if with sugar... I can um, emphasize some of the sub. So I'll go thick and I'll keep this in at zero, then disable the filters and should be, I have a fuse room start preset just in case everything wants to be reset. And then let's go to check out these low frequency. Pretty cool. Now, I think thick is good, I already tried it, so I knew, but punch could also be cool. It's also cool, I think I like thick more better, and let's engage the level management just so you can see what happens when I go real extreme. You heard that it was crunching against the uh, zero dbfs we were clipping but if i have level management engaged and i go up with the gain here in the low band things are gonna get compensated so there's still a lot of energy but there's also compensation that prevents you know up until the extremes happen to uh, prevents the da to just clip so i think i like it around 60. Maybe a little bit less. Um, what I can try is also this warm broad. Pretty cool. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Then I'm gonna open up base 3 and I'm gonna open a sugar on it as well. Now this guy has a smaller interface, so you can see the two things, but we can put both on a normal UI, for example, so that they stay both together here. And I wanna hear both of them at the same time. Reason being, when these two guys are on, I wanna hear how the sub behaves between the two. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave the lows on thick for the extreme sub and let's see if I can use warm or broad on base 3 to make things more glued together. I think I like around 50 for this. And let's open up base 2 now. And with base 2, I just want to emphasize those little details in the medium highs. And that's it. I wouldn't say there's anything else I need to be done to these three guys. So let's hear how the bass 
was behaving before and how, you know, it just become. It's pretty night and day. It still sounds the same, but there's more beef to it, right? So now let's go to the part where bass three plays against bass distorted. Maybe there's not much that I want to do to this guy, but I'll just, you know, for the sake of it, I'll keep it at 30. But it just sounds scooped the right way. This distorted bass doesn't really have much that I think needs to be done. So let's go to the drums, and I'm just going to keep things, you know, in, in, in context by not disabling or muting channels that I've already worked with. So for kick and snare, I went in a way that just basically emphasizes the kick more than the snare, but there's just a tiny little bit of high frequencies that benefit from it because they just bring the snare a little bit more up front. Now let's hear with the extra drums, which play mostly in this part. There's those little details in the high frequencies really get emphasized and they just play around the stereo field, right? So this is pretty cool, I have to say. And let's see uh, whether there's need for things to get just a little bit driven in this track. So I'm gonna use the drive or distort or crush, we'll see, probably drive, just something mild that can add a little bit of weight to the extra drums. Cool. So it's sort of saturating, but also creating some kind of compression, obviously. So it's making all those little details be less pointy and more like beefy and meaty. So this was before. You hear that there's some sub which isn't really fighting against the bass stuff that we did, but let's suppose that I wanna filter that because of how it works. I have filters here, so I can just use the high pass to get rid of those extreme lows. Maybe we'll play to our benefit here in this part where the three basses in the chorus are playing together and we don't want sub bass to just, you know, clutter the mix. All right, let's hear it with the bass. Well, I really like the sub, so I'm partial to not cutting it. Let's hear it in the chorus. I'm thinking it's gonna stay at 20 hertz and probably 15k just so that the highs in the yin processing don't become too prominent. But I lied. 
I want to keep that sub from the, you know, from the kick. Then there's synth fast and synth slow. Let's do synth slow first. I want to see if I can emphasize some mid beef in this stuff. <laughs> Right. These I like a lot. And then the fast synths instead, which we kept last, we're gonna use for those sparkling little details. <laughs> So as an experiment, I just went crush and just cranked, you know, the saturation knob and you hear it becomes sort of a creative tool that's really cool for um, synthesizers especially. So it's getting us, it's taking us to a different direction. I would say let's ease it out at like 26. <laughs> I like it this way. So we could try the wet inject to just make things go a little bit more or less, but let's not touch this. Let's go to the lead vocals and then we're going to process everything through our mix bus. So lead vocal, I don't know what's, what we're going to need. We used, I think, four mics together, two effect mics, two main microphones. So happy and sweetie, happy and sweetie. I love running through the sound of my town Happy and sweetie There could be some presence that we can use, let's see In this case, it's not much about the processing, it's more about the saturation stuff. So I can ease these two guys out and try and play with the filters to make things a little more interesting. Let's keep, keep this part playing. a sound for example it's a little less open and it's more you know just concentrated on the mid parts and has that distortion in this case distort really worked so let's check the chorus to see whether or not it's too loud now <laughs> it's actually helping the vocal you know, sync in the mix without being just overwhelmed by the music. When I bypass the plug, you could hear that now we have more volume from the single stems, so the lead vocals are syncing in. And in this case, the tendency would be, all right, we just crank the volume on the lead vocal. And this creates lots of issues usually, because you're gonna go and creep, creep, creep until, you know, you just have an issue with gain staging. In this case, we have more harmonic distortion from the lead vocal itself, and this is helping the vocal sit in the mix without really uh, jumping at us, which is something that I want to do with this record when the mix will be finished and you'll hear it. I don't want the vocals to be pop sort of vocals in front of my face. I want it to be inside, like a sort of distorted synth kind of sound. This was the signature also for the first EP. So we're going to keep that, because we like that. So, last but not least, the mix bus. We're gonna use a sugar here as well. We're gonna go 
in mid side mode and linear phase and we're gonna see you know where this takes us obviously i'm gonna use the chorus first and then we're gonna check it in the middle eight <laughs> I like what it's doing to the shine and I'm gonna try and see I think this is getting close to what my preset usually is I don't remember though we might want to try some side as well cool and now I want to use some distort just a little bit to see if I can get that little crunch. Let's load my preset and see. All right, sort of pretty close. So let's do a before and after with my preset. So as you can hear, a little goes a long way in this case. We just have a little more density in the mids, a little more distortion saturation. We don't need to pump the extreme frequencies so much since we pumped the stems already. So one of the few things that I carry over my Italian tradition is I like my espresso black, no sugar. But in the digital domain, in this case, I have to say this plugin can do a lot of cool things. I tried analog devices for it, but the phase coherence is always sketchy. And when you do parallel harmonic exciting, you should be very wary about low frequency content and mid high frequency content because it's gonna change your sound stage. The fact that here you can use linear phase and the fact that you do not have any issue with gain staging or distortion impedance from you know input and outputs like you have in real analog devices makes this plugin useful in a variety of cases so download it get it you know it's probably gonna get announced everywhere in the world very soon so probably by the time you watch this video it's already somewhere you know in a store near you so thank you for watching until next time ciao Dry, not satisfied, searching like a spy.